Hey everybody, Andrew Hogue here, your security, privacy, and forensics expert. Today I'm going to walk you through three different ways to install Java on macOS. Historically, Java was bundled on macOS, but in recent versions, it no longer is. There's actually a small shim executable there that then points you to do the installation when you end up using it. So a lot of folks get tripped up and need to understand how to install Java, which I'll walk you through in this video. Everything I'm going to talk about today is also on my website, andrewhogue.com. Just click on blog and look for the Java article or hit the search functionality. So let's dive right in. Each of the three ways that I'll cover today address a different type of use case. The most simplistic approach is to just download it from java.com, which is actually what Mac OS will prompt when you try to run Java for the first time. We also could install it with Brew, which is more of a power user using that third-party utility to install different applications on your Mac. And the third option is to use SDK Man, a tool that's really friendly for developers who oftentimes have the need to install and maintain different Java JDK versions across different projects. Now, a lot of people probably came to this blog and video because you ended up running Java or some command that needed Java and you got this error message that the operation couldn't be completed. If you're curious why that happens, we can take a look at Java itself. So let's do this real quick. So Java version says, hey, I can't complete this operation. Go out to java.com to download it. Now, if you're ever curious uh, where a command is located on your system, you can use the command which. And then I'm going to just come out here and say, what kind of file is that? And you can see here that there's a Mac O universal binary, which means that this is a native Mac binary, probably shipped with Mac OS. And what it does is it actually looks at a special directory and we'll come in here and take a look at it real quick, called Library Java Java Virtual Machines. And as you see, when we go through the different installs, our Java Virtual Machines will exist in this directory, either the full set of files themselves or something called symbolic links that point out to other places on your system where they're installed. So this binary here basically checks to see whether or not there's a version of Java registered with the system. Let's go ahead and clear this out come back and let's go with the most straightforward approach, which is simply going out to java.com. Most users will simply click download Java and that's going to install the Java runtime environment. And if you're only needing to run Java applications as a end user, this may be sufficient. But for a lot of the folks that follow my blog on the more technical side, we're actually going to need the Java development kit. And so we're going to click here and do the early access builds, which will take you out to jdk.java.net. Now I wrote this blog a couple of months ago, and so I'm gonna go ahead and click on the JDK 19, like I did on the blog, but for those kind of looking closely, you'll notice that version 19.0.2 came out since I last did this blog, and that kind of changes up some of the commands a little bit because the URLs change. So just for the purposes of this video, you're going to want to follow this approach here with 19.0.2, but I'm gonna go ahead and just pop out here real quick to the archives and show you what it looks like with the 19.0.1 version. So you can see here, there's different versions of the JDK that you can install based on your platform. And for Mac, there's two different ones. One of them is X64, and the other one is ARCH64. And the X64 is your older Intel Macs, and these ARM architecture 64 are for the newer Apple Silicon. Now, if you're curious which one you're running, you can come up here to Apple menu and click About This Mac. I'm not gonna do that because it has my serial number and I already have a screenshot of it here in my blog. So you can come out here and it'll pop up a little window here and show you what version of Mac OS you're running and other details about your Mac. And you can look right here at the chip and decide which version you have. So you'll have an older Intel chip or if you have an M1 or M2 or anything of that sort, you then need to go use the uh, ARM Arch64 architecture. So if we come back to the blog, I'm going to come out here and just uh, copy that command. So let's go over here, come back into our home directory, and then I'm going to paste these commands here. So you can see that I'm just 
changing into my download directory, and then instead of downloading it directly from the browser, which you're more than welcome to do, I go ahead and use the curl command. And this just says go output the file at this particular location using the name that the web server provides. So I'm just gonna go ahead and kick off that download. It'll just take a couple of seconds to download this. And then we can come out and actually take a look at that file. So. Okay, so we've got that file out here, but the question is, is how do we trust that file? Do we know, in fact, it is the exact version that's been verified by the developer? So one of the things that you can do is something called a hash function. And a hash function is just a mathematical algorithm that'll take in arbitrary input and then produce a consistent signature based on that input. And in this particular instance, they're using the 256 version of that, so SHA-256. If you come out to the web page, you'll see that for each one of these downloads, there's going to be a link that says, here's the SHA-256 signature. A string of characters out here that starts with 46.9a and ends with 2161. So now we know that that's the signature we should get. So how do you do that? Well, you just come back and use the SHA sum command in macOS. So let's pop back over here. So SHA sum, we're going to use the 256 uh, algorithm and we're going to use it against our file, which I need to go do. So that's sitting under downloads. And then I'm going to go ahead and run that command. So now we can see here that that particular file has a 469A. And if we kind of look at all the characters in the middle, we could end up verifying this ending in 2161. So basically now we have verification that the file that we downloaded is exactly the file that the developer intended and it hasn't been manipulated with. So the next thing that we're going to do is go ahead and extract that file to our system folder. So I'm gonna change into the downloads directory and then I'm gonna go ahead and run this command. So what does this do? The tar command is unpacking this particular file. So it's a, tar is a utility that's been around for a long time that packages up a bunch of files together and then it was also compressed. So we're going to use tar to extract and uncompress this particular file and then we pass it the minus C parameter and we say, hey, go save that directory that you're, all those files that you're creating out in the library Java, Java virtual machines. Now, since that's a system directory, we have to go ahead and use the sudo command, which is telling us go do this with elevated privileges. And when you do that, it's gonna prompt you for your password. And you have to type it in correctly. Okay. So that's going to kick off behind the scenes. And by the way, if you're curious and you wanted to see output to the screen, you can actually add a V there and then that will show you exactly what's happening. So now we have uh, those files located in the Java virtual machine directory and you can see them right here. And if we come back to our directory and just run Java dash version, you can see here now we have OpenJDK version 19.0.1 installed and get a little bit of additional information there. So that's a really straightforward way of just downloading it from java.com and then literally extracting it directly into your virtual machines folder using pseudo privileges. But let's just say you don't wanna do that with all your software, that's a lot of extra work, you wanna be able to easily update it. So we'll shift over now to a tool called Brew or Homebrew, which is where a lot of Mac power users use that software to manage all of the different software and packages they need on their system. So the first thing I'll show you real quick is if you haven't installed Homebrew, you need to go out there and do that. I've already done it, so it's not gonna be interesting to show you, but you can go out to the, home, the brew.sh website, you can read up all about it. Um, and here's the actual command, which you'll be running bash, and you'll be running it directly from the install script on GitHub. Now, of course, that's generally a dangerous thing to do. You wanna be very careful about executing scripts that you don't know what they do, and you're more than welcome to just download that file, inspect it, and then install it. Many, many, many people use Homebrew, so I consider this safe and went ahead and executed it that way. And it'll take you through a couple of different steps. One of the things you'll need is sudo access so that it can install and create files in protected directories. And it's also probably gonna prompt you to install Xcode command line tools if you don't already have them installed. So you just go ahead and click install. 
And then at the end, Brew will let you know if there's any additional steps that you need to follow, which is really great. It'll do this for any software that you install. And you can literally follow these steps here and it'll tell you directly where to put these. So what it's doing is, is it's actually initializing Homebrew in your ZHS profile so that every time you run your shell, Homebrew will be set up, configured, and ready to go. Now that we have that taken care of, we're just going to go ahead and install Java. So you can come out here and say, brew, install Java. Now that's going to go out and take a look and see whether or not any auto updates need to be applied. So it looks like there's a single update that needs to be applied. It's going to then download the OpenJDK. And again, like always, it'll walk you through different steps that you need to do after running Java. So right now, if we do Java-version again, we're going to see that we're still running on 19.0.1. But we know that Brew just installed 1902. So why is that? Well, we didn't actually run this particular command right here. And this command is saying, okay, using uh, privileges again, let's create a symbolic link using this directory that the new 19.0.2 was downloaded into and point that to that same Java virtual machine directory you saw earlier. So if we go ahead and do that, and I've already typed in my password, so I don't have to go Type that again, and let's take a look at the library Java, Java Virtual Machines. Now you'll see that we have the original 19.01 directory we installed, but now we have an OpenJDK symbolic link that's out there. So if we run Java-version again, take a look, and now we're actually operating with 19.0.2. So it's taken that latest version here. So that's super helpful, and now you can see how you could use that particular directory to install multiple different versions of the Java SDK. There's actually a um, utility called Java underscore home that I found super useful. And I'll show this to you real quick. This is, again, built in with macOS. If you pass it the capital V, it's going to go out to that particular directory up here that we've talked about and show you all the different SDKs that you have installed. So you can see we have 1902 that was installed from Homebrew, and 1901 installed with Oracle Corporation. Now, one of the other things that you can do is you can pass it a lowercase v and then give it the specific version that you want. And what that command does is it then passes in, or returns, I should say, the full path to the JDK there. That's really helpful because it makes it super simple to put these into, let's say, configuration files. So let's go into our ZHSRC. And let's just look at the last 10 lines. So if you take a look here, I've actually uncommented this so I could show you how this works. But you can export your Java underscore home environment variable. So this is where Java will always look to see what JDK it should be using. And then you can run the command libexec Java underscore home and pass it the version that you want. So this is a really convenient way to specify which version of Java you want to run as a default in your shell. So as convenient as it is to be able to specify the environment variable and to do that command line, if you're a developer and you need to jump between different JDKs and different, different projects, that really becomes pretty challenging. So the last version we'll go through is using a utility called SDK man. Okay, so the first thing we need to do with SDK man is go install it. Now you can come out here and read more about SDK man on their website. They actually have great docs, not surprising. So you can see a little bit more about what they're about. And then you can come in here under usage and get really good information on how to install and run it. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and again, use this command that I've got out on my website. So let's pop back to our terminal. Let's go ahead and run this. And so this is going to download SDK man and then quickly set up the environment. And you can see here that in order for it to run, we either need to start a new terminal or we need to just go source this file, which will init it for the first time. So let's go ahead and do that. So now that we're up and running, we can now just go out there and do SDK version. So this gives us an idea of what version of SDK man we're running. In my blog, I was running 5.16.0. So since then, it's been updated to 5.17.0. And then you could come out and simply list off different versions of Java that are available. So this is piping the results through less. So you can use things like spacebar, less than sign to go up and down. You can use arrow keys if you want. But you can see here, there's, there's a lot of different versions of the SDK that are available. And you can easily install them by just taking a default 
So we'll go ahead and do that. Um, or you could specify a particular version, and it even supports things like tabbing for, with, with autocomplete. So I'm just going to do this. So that's going to download the particular version. So the default for them is the dash tem version. It'll, again, verify those signatures, repackage them, and then save them to your uh, system so that you can then use it. All right, so now that's been set up, let's go ahead and run java-version again, see what we get. So now again, we have a whole new version. So now we're not on the major version 19, we're on the major version 17 that was just installed by SDK man. And the question is, is why? You know, where are we at with our environment variables? Let's just do that. So you can see here that the Java home environment variable has now been set by SDK man to the particular directory of where it just downloaded the current file. So we can come out there and again, see where that's located. And you could go out and see that that particular file exists. And if you want, you could go explore the SDK man directory. Okay, that's it. Three simple ways to install Java on macOS. Hopefully this helps you out, whether you're a developer, a power user, or just want to run some utility and you got that error message in your console. I hope you found this content useful and thanks so much for watching. Until next time.